Hi, Coke Scholar family and friends. Welcome to The Sip, the podcast that shares a taste of how Coke Scholars around the world are igniting positive change. This season features amazing panels of scholar experts discussing interesting and timely topics. My name is Aisha Shebby, and I'm excited to lead you through this season. I'm a proud 2020 Coke Scholar, originally from Miami, Florida, and now a junior at Princeton University studying medical anthropology. I also have my own podcast called The Hybrid Podcast. For those who are listening and may not be a Coca-Cola scholar, welcome. We're so glad you're here. To give you a little background, the Coca-Cola Scholars Foundation is the largest achievement-based and corporate-sponsored scholarship program in the country. Each year, it awards $20,000 to 150 high school seniors across the country who share a unique passion for service and leadership. There are now over 6,000 Coke Scholars creating positive change around the world. If you want to learn more, you can visit their website, coca-colascholarsfoundation.org. In today's episode, Koch scholars Sophia Jihan Miller, Tiffany Kassab-Williams, Katie Yu, and Ben Kaplan will have a lively conversation about building a personal brand and creating digital content. Let's learn a little more about them. Sophia Jihan, a 2005 scholar, calls herself a trilingual multi-hyphenate, blazing her own creative path in technology, fashion, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy to empower others. By day, she manages a team of client executives and technology leads at Microsoft, and by night, she's an entrepreneur, founder of the vibrant women's wear line Sophia Jihan, influenced by her mother and Caribbean roots. Tiffany Kassab williams a 1996 scholar, is a strategic thought leader for Totem Brands and an adjunct professor in the art department at Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. At Totem, Tiffany facilitates her clients in cultivating their company's brand, finding their purpose, and developing their culture, so owners and employees alike will feel fulfilled through their job. Katie Yu, a 2018 Koch Scholar and recent Brown University graduate, is a Korean-American creative who started a YouTube channel as a coping mechanism during the pandemic. Through her fashion-forward, comically chaotic, and meme-curated content, she has built a community of over half a million subscribers in less than two years. And she hopes to use her growing platform to advocate for the AAPI, Gen Z, and immunocompromised communities she calls home. Leading the conversation is Ben Kaplan, a 1995 scholar who is among the world's leading experts on viral marketing, digital marketing, branding, and sales. He is the founder and CEO of Top Worldwide, an international agency network comprised of 12 data-driven marketing agencies working in over 20 countries and is the best-selling author of several books, including the viral hit, How to Go to College Almost for Free. Now, let's hear all about branding from this experienced panel. Welcome to the SIP podcast. We have an esteemed panel for you today to talk about branding and personal branding and everything in between. We might talk about Taylor Swift, who knows? Um, (laughs) Your dreams may come true on this podcast, Um, but welcome to the podcast. Let's meet our esteemed panel. And first of all, Katie Yu, you're amazing. Tell us about yourself and then tell us about someone whose personal brand you admire. But first, your brand. All right. Thank you, Ben, for having me. Hey, you, it's Katie Yu. And I was a co-scholar from 2018. And I, if you ask me what I do, basically, I talk to a camera in my free time, like a lunatic, but that's okay, to quell all the existential crises that I have. I started during the pandemic. And ever since then, it spiraled into being a full-time content creator on fashion, lifestyle, and chaos. And in that light, I think that Somebody's personal brand that I really admire is the entire entity of BTS because they are a true rag to riches story in the K-pop world of how they were able to dominate in a niche of the music industry. And now they've skyrocketed to global rock stars. So that's been super incredible for me to watch as a Korean American. Okay. Well, well, there there you go. And, and and, and, And Katie's not joking about like, she's like, you know, films herself on camera, but you have a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll toot your horn a little bit here. You have a YouTube <laughs> channel. You have, you know, more than half a million subscribers, but then you also have the TikTok. You also have the gram. You also have all of that. And you've gotten to the point where you're getting invited. Like I, I, I saw this about you. You actually like went to, 
I think Coachella for a major brand, given your taste on pop culture with a bunch of other super important, fabulous people. <laughs> this is like what you do for, 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 for work now, right? Katie, am I correct? That is correct. Wow, you did your research. I'm, I'm very impressed and flattered. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, amazing. So Katie, you we have her, but also um, we have other amazing people. So, so Sophia Miller, you are like, I love this because you say multi-hyphenate. You're a multi-hyphenate, which means you do multiple things. Some relate to technology. Some relates to your Caribbean roots. I've heard there's you have some women's wear that I need to get for my wife. So, Sophia, tell me about what it is that you do and who is a personal brand that you admire. Yeah. Um, so, Coke Scholar 2005. I am so happy to be here. I consider myself a multi hyphenate. By day, I am a tech exec at Microsoft. I've been there for seven years. And by night, I am a fashion designer where I launched my own women's wear line inspired by my Caribbean roots, my mother, um, and actually my parents who migrated from Jamaica to the States in the 80s. Um, so you'll see a lot of vibrant pieces. Maybe Ben, you can wear like a jumpsuit or high waist. Oh, yeah, we're all we're all very forward thinking. Okay. okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. I like it. Okay. Yes. Um, and in all consuming, I am also a new twin mom. So um, that is something that is also a big part of my brand. And as I think about someone that has an incredible brand, the person that comes to mind most is currently pregnant herself, Rihanna, and she is a no, Caribbean sure. powerhouse. And when I think about people that are relentlessly themselves and using that to break so many industries and barriers, Rihanna is it. Um, so love her brand, love what she stands for and the impact she's making globally. And man, she is like owning the photos being pregnant. Like, have you, have you guys seen this stuff? And she's like, yeah. boom, like I'm not, you know, yeah. I am proud. I am here. Check me out. Like Rihanna, like go, go girl. Go, wow. go. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I love how powerful she looks and how she can still be sexy and on her business and a billionaire in skincare. I mean, she's just breaking so many stereotypes that were put on woman on what it needs to be, what you need to be like to be a mother. So I love it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so third member of our esteem panel, love this because Tiffany Williams, you're going to take us from the perspective of people who are content creators, creating their own fashion line to you're like the expert consultant who people come to, to get advice and help and they want to improve their brand, their visual identity. So Tiffany Williams, tell us about what you do, how you're a strategic thought leader, uh, for totem brands and then who's a personal brand who's someone that you admire okay um so first off i am a coke scholar from 20 no not not even 20 oh my gosh 1996 <laughs> i i hear you're 1996 <laughs> i i'm 1995 we should go through this and then look at like katie you over here 2018 come on yeah come on that's such, such a bright future experience. had the little youngins yeah. okay but no but okay you're I'm, 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 I'm beyond you i'm 95 you're 96 okay. <laughs> But keep, keep and, going. Yes. So I work for Totem Brands and we do branding for companies. So we help them figure out who they are, who they are both internally and build the brand within their culture, but also then what, how they want to touch point and put things externally out and how they want to touch their clients, their consumers, all that kind of stuff. So we do a little bit of both. We don't just do the visual branding, although we do that. We are big into branding is not just a logo and a website, right? It is who you are authentically from the inside out. And so we help um, our clients figure out our companies that come to us, figure out who they are inside and then show how to authentically express that outwardly. Awesome. And what is, is there, is, and then is there a project you've worked on? Is there a person you admire? Is there something else in terms of when you think of like, like kind of brands that, that you would love to do more work on or, or, or someone that, that every time, um, you know, they come on the channel, you, you tune in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, I also am a professor at Furman University. I do an adjunct, I'm an adjunct professor. So I do brand design and I've taught logos and symbols and some of that kind of stuff. So it's always fun when you get to do like make up the project and it's not real and you don't have to actually work for a client. So like this last semester, we actually had students come up with a hotel brand. They just drew the name of like the name of the city and then they had to make a whole concept based out of the hotel. So that would be like a dream to get to do that kind of stuff. It's super fun. They did hotel, restaurant, sub-brand, all that kind of stuff inside. Um, but if I were to pick somebody that I really admire that we've worked with, it would be um, a company that we just recently finished working with called Ducks and Drakes. 
and it was a children's clothing line that was for kids with that are tall, tall children. So okay. one of the big things is like the big theme was long live long legs. So we wanted kids to not feel different. The mother that came to us, she always had her pants never fit right. Her children's never pants never fit right. So she, the big thing was she wanted kids to feel good in her clothing so that they fit right in the waist and the length, right? Because a lot of times I have a tall daughter, you get pants that fit in the waist, they're too short. They fit in the length and then they're too baggy in the waist. And so her big thing, and one of the things that we helped figure out that it was all about was giving children confidence. And it wasn't just about the clothes fitting. It's about okay, so when it's not clothes, just the clothes fit. It's about something more than that. You're actually, that's what the brand you're building embodies. confidence. Sure. You're unleashing the potential they have because when their clothes fit, they can go on the sports field or go up on stage and be their true selves and not be insecure about the way they look. There, there so you go. I so love the flattering that, and that's brand, brand. Yeah, kind of like the core brand and values kind of the emotional truth of brand. Makes can really the, make a difference. Uh, makes total yes. sense. All right. So, and then finally, you might be wondering who is this guy? Uh, who is this guy <laughs> I am I am uh, Ben Kaplan. I am, like we said, a Coke Star from 1995. I am the CEO. Um, a, a global marketing agency called Top Worldwide. Top is an acronym. It stands for Test, Optimize, and Perform. So we like testing stuff and measuring stuff. And in terms of a brand of a person uh, I like, um, I you know, there's different people that I admire for different things. But one thing I admire people who are who are in business, but like don't take themselves too seriously. Have a little bit of fun. Relax a little bit. Just because you're in business doesn't mean you have to be a stuffy person. So someone that comes to mind is Richard Branson who's the CEO of Virgin, just because he kind of is who he is. He does these interesting stunts. He does these kind of fun things. Uh, he goes for it and he, he cares about business, um, but he is, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be stuff. So that's someone I would a, a, admire as well. So we have all sorts of people from K-pop bands to Rihanna to <laughs> Tiffany. It sounds like you admire this brand that you work with because of what they stand for to a person who doesn't, you know, you know, maybe is a business person, but breaks the stereotypes of what that person should be like. These are all personal brands um, we admire. So that's a great jumping off point to sort of ask the question um, for every, and, and for all the Coke scholars listening to who might be building their own personal brand is like, what are the qualities of a great personal brand? What are the qualities you admire? I sort of like, you know, Sophia, you were talking about some of those qualities of, of, of Rihanna that you, you love, but what is it besides her, if you were going to abstract that out, so some of you, what are, the, what are those qualities that make a great personal brand? Thinking about a great personal brand, things that stand out are consistency, um, and that happens over time as you really hone in on what is truly important to you, your values, what gets you excited to get up out of bed, and what you're doing and I know this is a thing that might be a challenge for some of the scholars, what you're doing personally and professionally, right? So, and I think that happens as you grow in your career, grow in your life and feeling more comfortable in your own skin. So again, when I think about a brand, the one thing that really stands out is consistency, consistency on message, consistency on how you show up and how you make others feel when they are hearing your, your brand name or they see your brand or so you're, someone you're else saying, is talking about it. You're saying like we're, we're doing the Coke the sip podcast so coca-cola <laughs> if it showed up and it was like purple and it was green and it was blue like that might be like a good like rainbow promotion they're doing something for pride month or something like that but it right. has to be you have to know what it is it has to be consistent for you to get it otherwise it's just like a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense that's what you're saying exactly it's literally not sticky and we know coke sugar content and it can be sticky, right? So <laughs> okay, that's what you okay. want. You want it to be sticky, just like the Coca-Cola brand is. Okay, so what else, Katie, uh, you, what else is like, you know, qualities of a great personal brand? You're building one, uh, you're a rocket ship right now, you're taking off, but what are those qualities that you hope you, you bring or that you've already kind of demonstrated for a great personal brand? Right, yeah, I love the points that Sophia has already touched on, especially when she mentioned how brands make you feel when you hear their name. And she also mentioned sticky at the very end. And I always going into anything that I'm putting out with my name on it, I make sure that it has sticky storytelling, which is a sticky word that I like to use a lot because there is that quintessential quote that the way to change anyone's mind, it's not gonna be statistics or facts. At the end of the day, it is a good story. And so I think that that has to back anything when you are 
marketing yourself as well as, as well as selling a solution or a product that is supposed to fulfill a need that somebody else has, you need to provide them a way to generate empathy and connection in between you and that person. And that can only happen through stories. So that would be my backbone that I say of building any personal brand and something that I've prioritized greatly in my own. So you've got to be a storyteller. So, so you've got to be consistent. We talked about that, but then you've got to like tell a story. You can be consistent, like without a story and kind of boring, or you can be consistent. That's evocative and personal and draws out emotions and all these kinds of things. And you're a storyteller. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, and is that on your YouTube channel, Katie, is that, is that what you, I mean, are you, you're giving often fashion advice. How are you a storyteller when you're giving fashion advice? Right. So I think that the best way to realize this is understanding that fashion and clothing, it's one of the universal experiences that unites all humans. Like we all have to put on clothes at the end of the day. And so when I am trying to explain fashion tips or teach my audience something about fashion, I go down the route of giving a personal anecdote because you always notice Whenever somebody's giving a speech, if you say, you know, there's the story or like, I'm going to tell you a story, you just inch a little closer to the edge of your seat. This is, this is I'm, I'm, just, I'm playing here. I'm That's sorry. That's literally my video. You recognize that, right? Did you, did you, yes. you, yes. This is the opening of your video that says, I, in title is, I look bad in everything I wear. And then you're like, dude, no, you're not just dressing right. well. And so See, that's, that's the story. opening for it. You're not just saying like, Hey, here's some tips for how to dress better. Mm -hmm. There's like the Italian music's coming in. You're setting the <laughs> mood. You're doing all of this, right? That, that's exactly. what you mean in, in terms of the storytelling? Yes. You build it up and you make it so that they can resonate with exactly where you are. Because everyone has experience trying something on and it not fitting right and wondering like, why does it not look as good as me as it does on the model? And be able, being able to piece that out in a story that you can both share is the way that you convince them that my tip is going to help you, right? So it, there you go. And, and, I, and I love the little text here that you have in this video. This is, I think, one of your most popular videos. It says, welcome to Shape Shifting 101. I expect straight A's from all of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bam! Mm -hmm. I want engagement. I want straight exactly. A's. You know, exactly. I want to pull you in. So you tell your story and then you're like helping people kind of shape their story, pulling that exactly. out too, through, through your content. It's a two-way street. Okay. Correct. Awesome. So Tiffany... Um, qualities of a great personal brand. What else? We say consistency. Katie's all about storytelling, telling a great story. What else? That it needs to be authentic. That authentic. is the number one most important thing is that it's real. Like that's what's so different between branding when, when Ben, when you and I were in college. <laughs> And <laughs> back now in the day, like, hey, back when electricity different was branding. found and we were in college and we took our abacus out. No, but what, so explain. It's, yes. So because back, back then Gap was really big and like all their advertisements had like famous people on them with the white background wearing their clothes. And just because they were on there wearing their clothes, then we just like all wanted to wear their clothes, the clothes they had on. I don't know. But that was kind of the idea back then. It was all external, right? So today, branding is more about being authentic, figuring out who you are, what your values are. So whether it's we're working with a company and it's a company and their values, or whether you're an individual and you're figuring out what's important to you, whether whether it's positive, negative, like whether the things that you feel vulnerable about showing people, whatever it is, whatever is true to you is what you should express outwardly. And then people will be attracted to it because they'll be able to connect to it. They will be well, able to feel it. Well, right? and that's a good question, but why, why is authenticity important? I mean, you hear that a lot about things, but like, why now? Why is it like, because the other, other way to go, right? We were told usually, you know, was like, you always got told us when you applied for your first job or something, like, you know, like fake it till you make it. Yeah. Right. And that, that was, was the other way. So like why 80s, shouldn't 90s. we just fake it till we make it? Why, yeah. why not do that? Why, why authentic? And just for, well, for, the, for the panel. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think a lot of it is the day and age we're living in today with, internet and social media and all these things, people are going to find out the truth, whether it's real or not, people will figure it out because it's out there for everybody that works for a company. If they aren't really who they say they are, the employees will reveal it. There's so much more um, conversation out there versus just what a company can just throw out there for people to see and hide behind it. Right. So today people want to feel a connection. They want to feel like I wear Toms and when I wear Toms, what am I representing? I'm saying that I believe in giving the free shoe as well as wearing my shoe. Everything that people, all the different brands they come in contact with and choose to buy into, very often, whether people realize it or not consciously, 
they're doing it because it connects to a piece of their identity. And that's kind of where the world has gone today. Uh, Katie, so, I see you nodding your head. What, yeah. what, what, you're nodding your head because what, how is authenticity important to what you do? And, and, and it's kind of this like, actually, I, I'm gonna, I just asked you a question. I didn't let you answer it. So I'm gonna let you answer the question, but let me, let me just pose this question because I can probably think about this, right? It's like, you get it and like, you have to be authentic, but Katie, like I've seen your setup, like it's like well lit, <laughs> right? It's like you edit it well, you put in effects. Like I'm guessing you're not like sitting around, hanging out with your friends, you know, looking like that. So it's like authentic, but yet it's not like, what is the tension behind that? Cause you're also trying to create a good product. How do you make it? It's real, but yet it's like you on your best day. Right. At the same time. Right. So I really like everything that Tiffany brought to the table about authenticity, about it being an integral piece of our identity and branching off her point. I think the reason why that has become so much more important in addition to just everything being more visible is that humans are hardwired for connection. And before we were like in villages together and families would live under one roof. But as society has increasingly grown, that the family unit has shrunk and a lot of us are in our own spaces alone all the time. But that need for connections is still in our DNA. And so the next way we're finding that is through these people or brands or YouTubers or creators, like that is where we are seeking that community now. So that authenticity is very much a commodity in terms of making that authenticity palatable versus not it. There is a huge tension. And honestly, it's something that I am still figuring it out because I remember when I was first gaining subscribers on YouTube, like maybe 10 to 50 K my dad was like, yeah, you're doing great. But like, how are you doing a lot of like AAPI, like Asian focused content? Like, how are you going to make yourself pal palatable to the white audience and stuff like that? Like you need to expand. And that was something that at first I was like, trying to make everyone happy. But I think the reason why I've been able to hone in on the authenticity of my brand is to realize that you can't make everyone happy. And all you need is like that tight knit community that comes out and roots for you. And in that way, I've been able to let my guard down a lot of putting myself to a less high standard as I go on, because these people are going to be rooting for me in the highs and lows. Um, but it's always a never ending journey. And hit me up do this podcast in five years and i'll probably have new <laughs> different, now, different answers that's where that. i'm at right now yeah, yeah. It's, an, it's an evolution uh sophia i love you tell the story which i love about kind of like someone else seeing something in you some value a brand some authenticity and says like hey i actually think you have something that's great here and and, and something to say so talk about that because that's actually a lot of times it's like authentic you sort of yeah you're telling okay i need to be authentic but someone actually came to you and said, I love what you represent. You should do more with it. T tell us, tell us that story. Yeah. So, um, you know, I love the comments made so far when, when it stood out to me about authenticity is that, um, everybody that's listening to this is a rock star, right? You light your city on fire in some certain way and you're impacting change on a global level. The downside to that is that sometimes our community, we come off as appearing perfect or like we have everything together. And sometimes it doesn't feel authentic. And it doesn't mean that we don't have struggles. I definitely have struggles, right? Like a lot of this has not come easy, but a lot of us do a good job of either carrying it well, or maybe sometimes not telling as much about the journey to get to where we are. So to Ben's point, a little backstory on how I launched my own fashion brand with literally no fashion degree. So when you are open and vulnerable, as Tiffany mentioned earlier, I think you have the opportunity to truly take your growth and expectations to the next level. I started out doing content creation about seven years ago in the Valley because I didn't feel like I was letting my creativity fully expand in what I was doing in my day to day. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want that fire to ever diminish. So I started doing content creation, a lot of things around fashion and style, which came naturally to me because I love how it makes you feel, that confidence it brings to you and to the table. And I was, um, I was leading a, sh a fashion show at Saks Fifth Avenue, and I connected with a woman there that worked at um, Fenty. And we caught up, 
you see the Rihanna theme going on. Yeah, which is so, Rihanna, Rihanna's uh, brand, right? Is Rihanna that, brand. That brand that made her um, a millionaire. Okay. Perfect. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, so she reached out to me afterwards and she said, you know what, Sophia, I, I rarely come to some of these blogger events because again, the authenticity piece sometimes doesn't feel like it's there. Like mm-hmm. we really have a community that we're connecting with. And she said, well, I felt totally different when I was here. Have you thought about launching your own brand? And I'm like, my own brand, my own brand of what? Which shows to the complexity of brands, right? I have my own personal brand, but she meant like an actual brand product, a physical product potentially sure. that I could could share and sell. And I, that was what the seed really hit and was put into me. And I said, you know what? I've always loved fashion. I've always loved style. Maybe I can launch my own clothing brand. And I started thinking about my inspiration and starting to think about my circle. And I put those dreams into the atmosphere. I felt like they were crazy and ambitious. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it out there. And I ended up meeting someone that um, had seen my brand in the San Francisco community, community. And he worked at Levi's for 25 years in supply chain. His friend worked at Levi's on the actual production side and said, you know what, Sophia? I love your brand of grit. You're being relentless. Your use of digital marketing. You focus on that, what you do well, and I will help you on actually learning the business of bringing a line to fruition. So by being vulnerable and humble and recognizing I don't have to do it well, I don't have to do every single part of my dreams well to make them come to life. I was able to put out a physical brand because I was confident in my storytelling, like Katie said, right? And I was confident that, you know what? My Caribbean root story, it's not the same as everyone's, but I feel truly passionate about sharing that, that immigrant story of like coming to the US, what that changes, how that drives, you know, what you put into the atmosphere. And I anchored on that and was able to get my fashion brand launched at the W in San Francisco. Again, just by being vulnerable and sharing my story. I had a pop-up in Bloomingdale's in San Francisco, like Bloomingdale's. I do not have a fashion background, but I was being authentic in the skills that I can deliver and being open and open to change and feedback on the areas that I needed to grow to take my brands, my actual fashion brand, Sophia Jahan, to the next level. Well, and, and absolutely. And, and I think what's interesting is, is, is a couple of things. I mean, one, you talked about the power of vul- vulnerability, which I think is actually something that a lot of Coke Scholars Weekend, there's, there, there's, a, there's a book, The Power of Vulnerability, and, and, and that can become important for authenticity. So that I know is, is a big part of Coke Scholars will recognize that, especially the, the recent ones. And then also, this is another sort of side door Rihanna related reference, which is I think you kind of personify the if you know the Jay-Z quote, I'm going to quote Jay-Z, the great philosopher, which is, <laughs> which is I'm not a businessman. I'm yes. a business man. Right. Yes. And you're a, bi- yeah. you know, you're a business man or this woman. And so making that leap from, you know, this is what I am. This is my personal brand, but like so much of this too. I mean, you did it. Katie did that. Tiffany, you help your clients do this. Of like, you have to kind of put, you have to like plant the flag and say like, I have something worthwhile to say. I'm going to create this fashion line. I'm going to create this YouTube channel. I'm going to do all of this. Um, because the, it ought to exist in the world. And, and Sophia, I've heard you talk about that, like this type of brand ought to exist. You know, it's a damn shame this isn't in the world. Let's bring it to the world. And you got you got to believe that. That's part of it too. So well, I'm going to add one more thing. Before, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Are you, I was going to say, one of the things as you were talking, Sophia, that I can just, that I really can connect with having been like a studio art major, then going into the graphic design world then doing a whole big, the whole big branding world. But something about what I loved is you were like, even though everybody may not be able to connect to the exact story of my parents and the Caribbean roots and the immigration exact story, they can create to how it makes them feel and a connection that however it may be that it looks in their lives, people feel that. And that's the way any great art, like we look at a great painting and we may not know exactly where that artist was going, but we know how that painting makes us feel. And if the artist uses their own experiences and vulnerability to create that piece, that radi- that energy radiates off that piece and you have a connection to it, right? Even if it's, and it can be a song, it can be a painting, it can be all different things. But for you, I know when I've read your story and followed you and, and seen the brand as a whole, like, I, I like, I love it. Like I feel it, you know, I mean, I have Lebanese roots. I have a grandfather immigrated here from Lebanon and I know understanding those connections and the love that I can feel through the imagery that you use and the colors and the passion. And, 
all those things, you know, it's so much bigger than people identifying with that exact story, but you put your out, yourself out there and be vulnerable and then they can connect the feeling of the story. So we're saying these same words and concepts over and over again, but using examples of how that can be done. Does that make sense? Ab absolutely. Pearls of wisdom, Tiffany Williams, you're, you're dropping them. We're scooping them up, but we're so, so we're, we're, so we're saying, <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna, Go the we're, we're raising the roof 80s. right now. Just, you can't see this at home. We are raising the roof. Tiffany just like set the bar down. It's true that she's a Coke scholar from 1996 because she is <laughs> raising the roof. Katie Yu is a compassionate person because Katie Yu didn't leave her hanging, right? When you raise the roof, you're like the only one. That sucks. That's horrible. Katie Yu jumps in, raises the roof. And Sophia's, Sophia's like, uh, I'm gonna let I'm like, Katie, <laughs> I'm gonna let us a TikTok dance or something to round things out, <laughs> like a quick one. <laughs> there, there, there you go. But I, I, love it. So, I actually think we've got a great definition that we collaborate on, which is we said consistency, we said storytelling, we said authenticity, we said great personal brands make you feel something feel something, they feel a sense of connection. Let me add one more thing to definition. I'll, I'll tell a super fast story to explain it from maybe a different definition of what a great personal brand is. Here's the story. I was in college and um, I was at a late night study session. You guys have all probably done that where you're out oh, studying yeah. with a bunch of study buddies. It's like three in the morning, you're super tired. And I had one of my most em embarrassing moments at that point. And let me explain how I got this embarrassing moment at the study session, which is growing up, I had little little dogs always as pets. I had a little toy poodle, little six pound cotton balls, you know, <laughs> and, and what I would love, love to do is I would love to, when they yawned, I would stick my finger in their mouth. Does anyone ever do this? Like their dog yawns. Okay. Now, <laughs> right now I'm getting like tumbleweed. Everyone's shaking their head. Like, okay. This is weird. This is taking the, the sit podcast has taken a strange turn here, Ben. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, let me finish the story. So I would, it would be a habit, right? So what would happen is every time the dog would yawn, I'd stick my finger in their mouth and they'd kind of, they a cute little dog. They'd come down and like discover my finger and look at like, Oh my God, how did that get there? What is that doing there? This is puzzling. So what happens is for years I would do this. They would yawn and I would stick my finger in their mouth. And it was, it was funny. And so then what happened is I'm at college. It's my freshman year. It's a late night study session. I'm so tired. I'm there reading the books. I'm sitting around with a group of people. There's a girl sitting across from me. Oh, oh God. She yawns. I'm not even paying attention. I don't even think my finger shoots out and goes in her mouth. And of course, it was an awkward situation, but a normal person would like pull their finger out of their mouth and say, apologize. I'm like, I'm stunned. I don't know what to do. I'm just like, it's just there. She's looking at me. Everyone in the group looks over at me. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me explain. And so my point is this. My point is this, is that a great personal brand is also what you do. It's your habits. It's what you do every day. And you're either forming great positive habits. You're forming awkward habits that are embarrassing you in college, whatever the habits are. So sometimes we think of branding as purely like it's the image. It's what mm. I show, even if it's authentic, but it's also about what you do. I would just off offer that. Mm. And yours is sticking fingers into- <laughs> Weird guy. You don't want to study weird, weird guy you don't want to study with. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Gosh. Okay, that's, that's your personal brand. So, so the, the cool part though, I think from, from that is that all of us, you know what? You're building your personal brand every day, every minute. It's by what you do how you interact with people, the kindness you show to others, the compassion, the understanding, all of the things in, 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 that you're doing. So either you're building your brand for good or you're building your brand for not as good, but we're brand builders. So why not kind of harness that, that process? Mm -hmm. all right. right, so that's, that's brands. But then here's the other part of that, which I wanna throw out to the group because there's some, some great content creators here, which is what are the qualities of great content? Let's say you're a brand, you're a personal brand, it's for your, your company, your business, your fashion line. And now you've got to create content. What are the qualities of great digital content that we can take with us? Because we can't just be like a brand locked in our room. That's fantastic. We've got to be out there in the world. So maybe Katie, I'll start with you because you are in fact a professional content creator. <laughs> um, what are some things that make great content, even content that you don't even create, that you want to share? What is it, the stuff that you want to share? What are the qualities? I think when it comes to shareability, which is the backbone of content these days, because virality is the currency that we use on the internet these days. And in that thing, I think it's 
connection and any content that makes me feel less alone or that you can cite back to a real life experience. I'm thinking like when you see a meme and then a person instantly pops into your head and you have to send that to them, that's both connection and makes you feel less alone. And it ties into a story in your real life. And so I think there is just that constant element of, yes, this is a digital world, but how can we use that as a bouncing pad for everything that we interact with in the real world? And those are the qualities that I think make great digital content, just that you can talk about it with other people in multi-dimensional ways. Yeah. Okay. So it wants to, it sort of wants to spread, right? Yeah. You, don't, you don't even just experience it if it's been great and be like, wow, that was awesome. That was great content. It's like, exactly. you feel compelled to tell someone else or to share it. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it sort of has a momentum behind it. Yes, exactly. Okay, exactly. okay. Well, that's a great answer. What, what, what else? Tiffany, uh, Saf- uh, Sophia, what, would, what, what else would be the great qualities of, of great content that you wanna share? Yeah, well, just on to Katie's point, you know, what we're talking about is in the technical terms, it's a call to action, right? That content has a call to action component to it which either engages your audience to reply back to the, like Katie mentioned, right? Everybody she was expecting A's from. So <laughs> expecting A, how is she expecting A's if she can't grade or see what you're wearing or give feedback on that, right? So she's done a good, a good example of how you create content that is sticky and it has a dialogue that's already set in to the story that she's sharing, not just talking to, you know, a plain screen and it's like, no, this is a conversation. It's a two-way street. So just okay, so you're saying so great point. content is engaging. It is, mm-hmm. it creates a two-way street, not a one-way street, right? Which right. is kind of very yeah. different than what content would have been 10 years ago, right? It would have been just like, exactly. yeah, we're going to broadcast this on TV. You're going to like it. Now we want to like, we want to have a conversation back and forth. Mm-hmm. What else? Okay. Tiffany, agree or disagree? I agree. And it's interesting because that goes back to that whole, what we were talking about, like the whole gap make it look shiny and perfect versus it being a conversation because the internet has now made it a conversation, right? Whatever you're doing and social media and all this thing. I mean, people are going to comment on you. They're going to, they're going to love it. They're going to hate it. They're going to cancel it. They're going to, now people are uncanceling things. There's like all kinds of things they're going to do. So it's a conversation regardless you're saying. It is. And I think to add to it, I think anything that can be inspirational, um, and inspire people. And that comes back to the authenticity and telling a great story because people connect to that. And if you're vulnerable, people connect to that. And so I think anything that's inspirational also will inspire people to put it out there. Right. Um, from a actual company point of view, like where you said, getting people to go back and forth. If I go back to that children's clothing company, Ducks and Drakes, what we did for them when they first launched to try to get it out there is putting like, let's say, a little, a kid who's, a kid talks about why they think it's great to be tall. So they are confident and proud. Like it's great to be tall because I can run faster because I take bigger strides or it's great to be tall. The quote was one little kid was that I can reach the book for my friends that they can't reach and give it to them. So it gave them confidence. And we put those things out there in social media and then ask people to share it with friends that had children that are tall and to share their comments of what their kids say about what it's, what's great to be, why it's great to be tall. So you get people interacting with you, but then you put all this inspirational and positive energy out into the world and people are attracted to that, right? Instead of it being something that could be a negative, it's turned into a positive. Absolutely. And, and you remind me of something that actually, um, uh, for, for my sort of day job podcast, I do a podcast called Top CMO, I interview a lot of CMOs. And I interviewed recently, and it was an interesting comment from um, basically the, the, the marketing leader who launched the original Macintosh, like Mac computer for Apple. And what was interesting about what she said, because I asked her like, what is marketing? What is branding? And her name's Andy Cunningham. Um, uh, she's one, if you, if you ever watched like the, the, kind of Apple movies. She's like one of the Andes. They're always talking about the Andes in the movie. She's one of them. And she says like great marketing or great branding is like real estate in people's brain. What she means by that is like real estate, like there's a finite amount of territory in someone's brain. I think several times we use the word sticky and it's like, do you have a piece of real estate in their brain? Does that content live there? And of all the things that they got to track, it actually like it, it stays. And it's like, you know, playing Monopoly and you own Park Place and it's there and it stays with the person. And that's really um, that's really valuable. And so 
our, for us, for our work at, at, at top, um, uh, the, the agency, one of the things we, we say, when we look at great content, we try to evaluate it through this lens of three things, which is one, simple. Is it simple enough to do what Katie said, which is be transmitted? Because the problem is if it's great content, but it's not simple, let's say it's great content, but it takes you like 20 minutes to explain. It's just not going to be able to spread no matter how great it is fast because you can't tell your friend, you don't have 20 minutes to explain how great this is, right? It's got to be simple. Second thing is it's got to be surprising, surprising. So we all, we've seen it all before. Oh, come on. Oh, it's another, that's another fashion YouTuber. Okay. I've seen this all before, but it's got to break the norm. There's something different. There's something unexpected. It's something that just captures us. So it's got to be surprising. And then third, it's got to be significant, right? So the idea is like, well, let me give you an example of something that has the first two, but not the third. Like, see, here's something that's simple and surprising. Blah! Right? Oh, God. Blah. You really simple. got me. You got, oh, I got you there? Okay. <laughs> that, that was simple, right? I said blah. It was surprising. You're like, okay, in a, in a, in a the SIP podcast, people don't usually like do a made up word and go blah. But was it <laughs> significant? I didn't really say anything right? I didn't say anything. So the significance is you've got to say something important. So if it's, and whatever that is, I mean, it can be a cat video and some insight about cats in our culture, whatever it is. So simple, surprising, and significant is this framework to think about content. And we're constantly trying to, like, can we simplify this? Can we add more surprise? Can we make this say something more important? And that's kind of a, maybe a helpful little formula you can use, it, use, use in your mind. Katie, you're not in your head. What is, you know, you're like probably going to record content later today. How do you get yourself? <laughs> She's nodding her head. Yes, you are going to record later today. How do you get yourself in the mindset? You can start with like to make this practical because many, maybe, maybe many of our listeners want to build their personal brand. They want to build an external brand. They want to do something like Sophia and, and build, you know, and, 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 she, and she's, she's a business man, like Jay-Z said. So what can you, <laughs> I like the snaps. What can you do to be able to do that because it's so much easier to say it than to do it. Right. I think that it's it's a huge activation barrier threshold. It takes a lot of hyping yourself up. And I can for sure confirm that the first time I turned on a camera, I really, I remember pressing the button, moving six feet away, staring and being like, what am I doing? And then I just turn it off. And I would do that like five times before I even got a good take. And I don't even think that video ever made it to the internet. So my technical first tip is really pretend you're on FaceTime with your best friend because your best friend, why are they friends with you? Because you're funny, you're fun to be around. And there's a reason because you're comfortable. And so if you emit that energy, you can channel your best, most entertaining and authentic self. So that's number one. And I also think you just have to understand that you really can't get good at something until you do it for at least a year. So you have to give yourself grace. You have to be kind to yourself that there are going to be times where you wake up and you're like, I really feel boring and insignificant today. And that is fine. That is the human experience. So you just have to keep going until those humps get lower and lower and less volatile and you can power through them. So those are my tips. Okay. Well, and, and what else for, um, for the rest of the panel, what else do you do to get yourself in this like content creation zone? What do you have to do? Do you have go-to habits, tricks? Uh, do, you, do you play a go-to? I mean, um, Sophia, are you playing like, you know, Rihanna songs to get you pumped up? You have like umbrella, Ella, Ella, Ella. <laughs> in, in the background, like what, what are your go-tos to get in the zone? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, oh, good. No. I love it. I love it. I'm okay. imagining that whole scene right now. Like, <laughs> now that is memorable. Okay. And significant. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, I think content creation has come such a far way. If you think about the traditional mediums like Instagram, TikTok, and and giving users us the ability to show up as your full self. Like there was a lot of pressure before for this aesthetic to be so perfect. So nowadays, honestly, I have way too much content. The, the trigger is actually posting the content. Like I'm sitting on tons Whoa. of content and Katie, Whoa. I know you are too. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I would say, honestly, you should probably look back at the videos that you're taking with your friends, like photos you've taken that have given you inspiration as Tiffany has said it's probably a good place to figure out like, what gets me excited? What gets my friends excited? Like, 
did I share something in the group chat and it got like 20 likes, 20 loves on it? You know, just think of, I think you, you reset it and take a step back on thinking about what you're already sharing, what you're already putting out there is a good way to start. When I think about actual tools for me that come to mind, um, one that I like is Planoly, which is an actual planner. And you can like put content in there and think about how your content will look on your interface. That's really important if you like have a, a brand like I do for Sophia Jahan, so I can plan out my content over time. And you want a visual how, look at, you want to exactly that vision. my visual look. I can think about my captions. I can have someone on my, I have a social media manager on my team. So we can go back and forth and through Planoly, this tool on content creation. Um, so that again, that is one tool Planoly. And there's a lot of content creation planning apps out there, but to kind of take the angst over, I don't know what to put out a content planner, just like an old school agenda that people had back in the day is also helpful in thinking through putting content out into the atmosphere. And, and one of the things that reminds me, I mean, I think, you know, Katie, you were saying it takes you a year to get good at anything. It's like mm -hmm. this kind of con contradiction, right? It's like, you have to be willing to be not good temporarily to get yeah. good. Right. And that's ironic. And that's, it's tough because some people aren't willing to do that. And, and actually, honestly, I know there's, you know, people listen to this podcast, a ton of high achievers, friends of high achievers. It's like Coca-Cola scholars, family and beyond. So this is actually the hardest for people who are super high achieving, right? You're just right. Used to being good at stuff right away. And there's very few content creators who are like amazing right away. I mean, some people get lightning in a bottle, they get lucky, they do okay. something, but it's very few people who are like professional, good at this right away. So how do you do that? How do you like, have the wherewithal to sort of stick with it because you almost like have to be willing to be bad to get good. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that. Well, I think that in life, that's the way anything is. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about going to a little league softball game this week of one of my friend's daughters and my son pitches in little league. And he's just finishing up, just finished up his little league season and shout out to Cass. He won the championship for his little league wow. and he pitched we can game the game on Thursday the night. The roof. Here we go. It was Here awesome. He got to play at our um, Boston Red Sox single A baseball stadium. They let the championship play there, which was awesome. It's called the Greenville Drive. It was super cool. Great way to end little league. But it was interesting because I was watching a little a friend of my daughter's who just turned nine and she was pitching in softball and she was just struggling up there. And she was so excited to get to go out there when they called her number. She like ran out to the mound and was so excited to get to go pitch. And then she just struggled and walked kid after kid. When she came off, I just looked at her and I said, girl, it's coming. It was not easy for my son the first time when he was in third grade. And you just keep trucking at it. By the time you're his age, you're going to be an awesome pitcher. And I don't doubt that for a minute because she was brave enough to go out there and put herself out there. And she wanted to be there. She was excited. And so, and she, she puts in the work. So I know she will. So I think I love sports for the fact that they give, like if any of y'all played sports, they give you the experience of learning how to do that. So just like you may have done it as a kid in sports, it's the same lessons it teaches you in life to go put yourself out there, you know, for doing this, for doing personal branding you're not, it's not going to always go well at first, but you just keep trucking and you get good because you play, you, you have fun, you have fun doing it and you play hard. Same well, thing. I, and it reminds me of a, a kind of a story from Jay Leno, who's kind of, you know, famous comedian used to host the tonight show. And he would say when he was trying to break in as a comic that there would be auditions for, to be a comic in LA. And he'd be in this huge line, right? Hundreds of comics, like open audition. And he'd be in the huge line and he's like near the back. And at some point people would get tired and someone would like walk, step out of the line and he'd like step up a step and someone else yeah. would get kind of bored. Okay. This, you know, screw this. I'm not waiting around. They'd step out of line. He'd step up another one. And what he said was he just felt like he just needed to stay in line. As long as he That's stayed true. in line, others would step away and he would move up and he would get a shot. And of course he did. So what it's else making me just oh, on yeah, that? Yeah. It's making me think of Malcolm Gladwell's book Outliers, mm -hmm. and he talks about those ten thousand hours. Yeah, ten thousand hours is a lot of hours. Lots. Right. So we're talking about Katie's talking about a year, yeah. a year just to try to figure out where you stand. So what mm -hmm. Tiffany, everyone's saying, it takes time and effort. Just like mm -hmm. no one was a magician and got into Coca Cola Scholars from one year of high school work. Yeah. yeah. 
did not happen. Exactly. Exactly. So when you think about brand building again, it happens over time, little by little. It is scary. It is like, okay, uh, the world's going to see me fail. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not many people are okay with that, but guess what? People's attention spans are so short. Yeah. People will forget. People forget. Yes. Yeah. It's always way more important to you, right? It's like traumatic <laughs> it for you, but someone else is to on, to the, on to the next thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we got, we got to wrap. We're having too much fun. We could, we could go, we could <laughs> go for a 24 hour podcast marathon, marathon here, but then, but then Carolyn may, may, may pull the plug on this. So <laughs> let's do this. Let's end up with, um, a kind of scholars, uh, tradition on the fast five, five, Fast questions. These got lightning rounds. So these aren't like, you know, your your PhD dissertation here. This is fast. <laughs> some useful practical stuff, maybe some suggestions of content, some other things. Let me let me throw these out to you right now. We'll go rapid fire. We're gonna start with Katie. Uh, do this here. So what are two apps or websites you can't live without right now? Go, Katie. Okay, definitely Spotify because everything's on there. The news, the music, everything. So Spotify and then Strava for my runs to track the miles and stuff. So those are two. Okay, and then you combine no Spotify with the Strava and then boom, and it's amazing run. Yeah. On, on your run. And what are you, what's, what are you listening to right now? I'm just gonna throw that at you. What I listen to right now, I'm <laughs> I always listen to Taylor Swift. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what season. I'm always supporting my girl. Oh, oh, so. Always, always there. Okay. Yes. Okay, then. okay, good, good. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, two apps or websites? Tiffany. I'll go. Okay. Uh, my number one is Chick-fil-A app because I'm always, <laughs> okay. ordering. I'm always in a hurry. I'm running my kids everywhere. I work during the day. Soon I pick up my kids from school. I'm running around all the time so I can order my food ahead of time. And it's there when I get ready, when I get mm. ready. Okay. Got it. Got so it. I like yeah. that. And then I'm with Katie and Spotify because I love listening when I go on my walks to my Brene Brown podcasts that inspire okay. me. There you go. Love Power vulnerability yeah. right there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Love her. her. Unlocking us. That's like one of my yes. favorites. And if I were to pick a third Apple music, because I have to have my music. Okay, so you guys have to do Spotify, you do music. That's where I do my music. So I'll give Apple a little shout out too. Okay, you can actually run to Chick fil A (laughs) while you're doing it. Okay, good. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Yeah, Sophia, two apps Um, you can't live without. Yeah, well, uh, Instagram, I'm on all the time from content creation perspective. Um, Peloton, I am using that app often. And actually I use the app. I don't even have the bike or the treadmill or any of the devices. Like literally I'm using it for the cardio, for the yoga, everything else. So, um, huge plug for those of you that's like, I don't have space for a machine or anything. Mm. Peloton is awesome. You just inspired me. (laughs) There you go. And I'm going to throw this out there. So, and, 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 and and a little bit, because I live in our sort of websites all day and our own apps that our company has. But one is called nationaltoday.com. Check it out. It's for celebrating every day. Every day is an extraordinary. It's actually the most popular holiday website in the world. There's 9 million um, visitors each month. Uh, and then um, another one, um, I would just say, gosh, what am I looking on my phone here? I would just say, you know what? I, I, I've been, I'm at that phase where I kind of like look around and I don't know, this is like a thing, I think, but like I even heard, um, Izzy Azalea say this like Zillow. I'll kind of look at Zillow. I'll just like, like look at what like houses are around. I don't know. That's a little weird. It's like I'm not really in the market for a house. It's not weird. I'll check on there and like look at there. Like ah, oh, you know that looks like a cool yard. I don't know. That's a little weird. Okay, number no, two. It's not. My it's husband's not. favorite pastime is going to open houses. <laughs> okay. There you go. Going going to, go to open houses. Yeah. Okay. So um, number two, if if I looked at the music on your iPhone or iPod right now, what would most surprise me? What would most surprise me? We heard about the Taylor Swift. That's not surprising. Everyone, <laughs> I, I don't care if you, you pretend you don't have it. You have it. I know you have Taylor Swift on there. So what's surprising though? Tiffany, anything surprising? I, I don't know. I guess it depends what you expect out of me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I listen to all kinds of music. So I don't know. My uh, favorite. So Sophia, was- Sophia, anything surprising that you just wouldn't um, like, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely looked up um, Hanson Brothers. Mm-bop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, for I'm like, yeah, my girls are starting to babble. So I'm like, this, this is this is a good one for them. And for me, okay, there I'm, you go. I gotta you, be honest. Any, yeah, we know you like the K-pop. Besides the K-pop, what else do you right, have? Right, right, right. So something I guess is, is my friends have converted me into 
listening to a little bit of country, which is shocking. So that's been a genre that I'm tapping into, um, especially all the songs about like wives angry about their husbands cheating and stuff. It's very, very interesting. It's we love storytelling, the drama, so. Katie. Storytelling. Yes, that's exactly. what brings you in. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. So. And then that's I actually it relates to my my wife because she is the she's French and she's the only oh. French person who likes country music. <laughs> She is like really the only French person that will like recite like the lyrics to like Redneck Yacht, Yacht Club to you right there. So there you go. I have to have, have, have to find it. <laughs> so there you go. Got okay. It. Next question. Favorite book or piece of music or art that has helped or inspired you in your life? Katie, you, I've, I know that you like a book that does deal with habits, I believe. Right. So I am obsessed with Atomic Habits. It was the Atomic number one best-selling book in the world. Okay. Atomic yes. Habits. Got it. So there is that one. Down. Okay. And what, what is it about Atomic Habits? So it's basically how you can just dramatically improve your life with the little things that your brain automatically does. So if you rewire the everyday actions, it dramatically increases the quality of your life. And it was revolutionary in turning me from a night owl to like actually being up when the sun is up stuff like that so like well, and, and actually and amazing because i've actually seen this in your youtube channel where you actually give advice on creating right. content that you should stack yeah. habits together you say yes. do this other thing like you always do this one thing and you want to do content creation put it with it so exactly. that you go out for coffee with your friend bam take a photo applying atomic habits to your advice in your YouTube channel. Exactly, exactly. It's all about streaming. Ben, paying attention. Wow, yes. amazing. You take, you're taking notes. Amazing. You're getting a straight A. No, no, no. But honestly, that was, a, that was a useful tip. I was like, I should jot that down. That was very right. handy. Right, So, so yes. thank you for that. Of course, uh, thank you. you um, and, so I'm, and I'm just going to end up on this one and say, um, piece of book or piece of art or music that has helped or inspired in your life. I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm going to say Katie Yu's YouTube channel <laughs> has impacted me because that was a great tip and I learned some video editing tips you can learn some useful stuff there so I'm just wow out there. so touched wow thank you, thank <laughs> okay. you. you get a straight A okay I got a straight A I'm one of the A, a students I, I'm kind of like more into A pluses so just throw it out there okay but, okay, fine. Yeah. okay. Great inflation. what quote or motto do you live your life by we've quoted Jay-Z today <laughs> um well, who else can we quote quotes that you can or models that you live your life by yeah well um it is to whom much is given, much is required. And this is more of a, this is actual scripture, but it's more of, I think, a motto that reigns true for a lot of Koch scholars. And like all of us on this call are blessed and fortunate in so many different ways and living in this time where anxiety is really high. And, um, you know, it's just a constant reminder to do things like this or we can come together with other Koch scholars and, and give back and share our own gifts and our own vulnerability and where we make mistakes to help others grow. So that's one. That's and I, I love that. And thank you for citing the, 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 the scripture on that as a source, because I feel like people hear that and they're like, that's from Spider-Man. <laughs> you know, that's what you do or something like that. Right? You know I mean? So I appreciate you know saying where this is from. Yeah. Spider Man might have lifted it from some yeah. other source. Yes. Yes. What else? What other quotes or mottos do you live your life by, Tiffany or Katie? I am all about spreading joy. That is like for me, I feel like anybody on any given day could just use a little bit of joy in their life. And I'm all about if you don't feel true pain, you can never feel true joy, the yin and the yang. And um, and I really I just Everything I do, each day I wake up, I try to find a way to, to spread some joy. And it's, it's amazing if you spread joy for somebody else, how good it makes you feel too. By there doing you go. That. It's contagious. It's contagious and a good thing. That's one of the funny things about, about joy and, and, and giving. Absolutely. Uh, Katie, any other quotes? Or are you just like quoting yourself in, in your no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> We're just go there, no, 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 I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. What, what other, quote, other, other quotes or inspiration? I think my number one quote, it's from Steve Jobs, and it's, you can only connect the dots looking backward, never when you're on the path itself. And so that's really helped me get through a lot of my rock bottoms and lows, because looking back, I had to go through that to get me to the next point in my life. And so whenever I come up with, whenever I come into contact with a new hardship, I know that it's for connecting the dots later in the future. So it gives me just a sense of peace. Right. Well, and, and, ab and absolutely. And I, I think I'm reminded, like, imagine if you could know everything that would happen in your life exactly to the second to the minute. Imagine it was all good stuff, all you wanted. If you knew exactly what would happen in every minute of every day and there was no surprises, 
Where's the fun in that? Would would you want that? So you kind of got to, I think what you're saying is you got to be able to embrace the uncertainty, embrace the unknown. That's adventure. That's Mm -hmm. excitement. And for anyone that wants to accomplish something a little bit more, do a little bit more, do something outside of their comfort zone, some point you're going to have to get comfortable with that. So mm-hmm. absolutely. You never grow. I mean, you never grow in life if you knew everything that was going to happen. Like that's right. part of concerning. Yes, absolutely. And, and I'll, just, I'll just throw a quote out there. Um, and, the, and the quote is from Steve Martin, which is some have a way with words. Others Ooh. not have way. <laughs> what? Think about that one. Let it marinate. Some have a way with words, others not. Wow. Just I'm throwing that out there. It did not make a difference in my life, but I like the quote. Oh, okay. got it. Thank you. Got it. You. Got it. Think it'll, it'll simmer. And then you'll be like, like listeners, you'll be there like tomorrow. Like, I got it. I got it. That one's good. Okay. So final thing, what <laughs> makes the Coke Scholars program or network unique? We're all Coke Scholars here. We span, wow, more than 20 years of Coke Scholars here. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what makes Coke Scholars so unique and why do we all uh, kind of love, love the Scholars Network? I'll start by saying um, that the people are what make it unique. I remember going in 1996 and I got to go walk on Olympic field when I got to fly down to Atlanta and when it was, when the Olympics were in Atlanta and be a part of all of it, go to Martin Luther King's world of Coke, all that, all of that. But the most as amazing and memorable as it all is the most mind blowing and memorable thing to me were the people. Like I was blown away at what amazing people I met and what all they had done. And I continue to be blown away. I'm blown away by every single one of you. Like so inspiring to be around people that are just so motivated and inspiring and just positivity. It's awesome. Okay. So positive people that yes. you can connect with and inspire you for your own life, which is, which yes. is great. Um, what else, uh, Katie, uh, that, 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 that stands out to you? Right. For me, I think it's, it's encapsulated a journey. I think what it is, it's because it's a network of great-minded individuals and they co kind of tapped into us at like our most, our budding points. Mm -hmm. And to be able to see how far we've come and to, to be in a room with people who have been ahead of me on this path and see how amazing y'all have turned out. It's like a great source of inspiration and also a reminder that we are truly each on our own journeys and there's so much in store for each of us and it's so unique for each of us. So I think it's just great diversity and prosperity and like inspiration, all of those things to see us blossom from those little vulnerable high school students we were when we went to that program. So yeah. Little growth. baby bear, a little bit awkward, yeah. little stumbling around and look, look, yeah. at, look at the growing up now. Exactly. And, and Sophia, uh, any other uh, thoughts on what makes the Coke Scholars Network unique? Yeah, I'll just round it out that my best friend of 17 years that I met in Atlanta uh, was through the Coca-Cola Scholars Program. And it definitely um, is, it just provides unique community and opportunity in that senior year. I, I missed my I think, prom weekend going to Coca-Cola wow. Scholars. So it was ah. just the timing. And it was a lot of other scholars that did the same thing. It just shows like how committed all of us were and excited about this opportunity to meet so many awesome individuals across the U.S., in this unique um, environment. And yeah, just so shout out to Natasha Williams if she's listening to this. Natasha Um, Williams, BFF, we're raising the roof right now. (laughs) Okay, that got Sophia to to, to, to actually raise the roof. (laughs) Her best friend. Your best friend, okay. You met met her, so you're saying you met her at Coca Cola Scholars Weekend. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, her Coco Scouts weekend on one of those those fun buses riding around Atlanta, and we were talking, and she mentioned that she had a sister, um, a sister unfortunately that passed away, but her sister's name was Sophia, spelled the same way as mine, Sophia. which is okay, amazing. pretty amazing. unique. Um, and yeah, I just felt like you know God put us there for a reason, and yeah, we're definitely lifelong sisters now. So and, and there's people in my college class that were Coca Cola scholars that got married. So, so I, I, I know them, uh, yeah. uh, Tom and Alexandria. There's many other cases of, of marriages, lifelong friends, groups, people who stay in touch together, which brings us to the conclusion that really, Katie, you, oh. you're looking for people to, in the Coca-Cola Star, <laughs> I'm totally messing with you. But I'm saying- Save the date. Yes, the date. You, go, you, never, you never know. And so go check out Katie Yu's YouTube channel. 
and then <laughs> hit up Carolyn <laughs> for her email if you're interested. Okay, Carolyn. Oh my gosh, matchmaking. By the way, if, 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 if all of you who know Carolyn, she is totally into making this happen, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be edited out of the episode. You may hear this, you may not hear this, but Carolyn, I know you are like a matchmaker here. So let's just, oh my let's, God. let's just throw that out there. Um, I'm going to say one more thing in, in all seriousness. I mean, what is, is truly remarkable, and, and some of you may know my background. Um, I wrote a book about college scholarships called How to Go to College Almost for Free. So I've studied a lot of scholarship programs. I do not know a single program like Coca-Cola that sticks with people and stays in touch and tries to be a resource and tries to connect people like an incredible alumni network that doesn't end the minute you get the scholarship. So I've never seen that before. It's to be commended folks like, you know, Jane and Carolyn and the whole crew over there. Um, it's really remarkable and it continues to give much value and joy and slightly rambling, but fun podcasts <laughs> even to this day even to this day. So just to wrap up, just the dot coms, where do people need to go to check this out? If you want amazing Caribbean inspired women's wear, uh, Sophia, where do they go? <laughs> yeah, so you can find me at Sophia Jahan, that's S-A-F-I-Y-A, and my middle name, J-I-H-A-N. I'm on Instagram, that's my website, I'm on Pinterest, um, or you can find me on LinkedIn. Okay, great. And Katie, for amazing fashion tips, content creation, and people just want to say, hey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> where do Stop. people go? Where do people, where do, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Where do people go? <laughs> where do people go? Oh, my goodness. So you can look me up on YouTube because that's my home base, and it's Katie U, and Katie is Haiti with a K, so K-A-I-T-I, -I, and then Y-O-O, -O, so Katie U. Okay, and then Katie from there, you can find everything else. You can get to the the, the ecosystem, the key. Yes. 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 And then yes, Tiffany, uh, brand consulting, visual identity, where do they go? Absolutely. Totembrands.com. It's T-O-D-E-M brands.com. Come check okay. us out. Okay, awesome. And I'm uh, Ben Kaplan. Thank you uh, for tuning in. You can find out stuff about our uh, global agency. We're in 20 countries around the world. It's called topagency.com. We're also doing internships. We're also hiring. So hit us up there. And uh, also, um, you can check out National Today. And if you just want to, you know, hit me up then to if you just do here's here's a quick little email address, if I can help in any way, anyone in the network, friends of the network, just send me an email at um, Fastest way is CEO at topagency.com. I'm happy to help connect you and, and help in any way I can. So thank you so much. Thank you to, Co to Coke. That's the sip. Give yourselves a hand. Tiffany, Katie, Sophia, <laughs> Sophia, raise the roof. Raise hey. the roof. There we go. will raise the roof. <laughs> okay, you raise the roof. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Go out there and spread some joy. Bye-bye. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Pause. Let's do, um, uh, I'm going to do a screenshot, okay? Yay. So, smile yeah. or do the peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode between Ben, Tiffany, Sophia, and Katie. For links to their full bios, resources, and other things they discussed, check out our show notes or visit coca Foundation.org. And if you have an extra minute, we would love for you to rate the podcast, leave us a review, and subscribe so you'll be the first to receive new episodes. Tune in next week for our final episode of the season, where scholars Anthony Lim, Joelle Berval, Athena Kan, and Caitlin Chenna will discuss the future and current state of healthcare. Until then, keep changing the world, scholars. Bye now. <laughs>